This is Abe Freetanzer from the Film Experience, and I'm thrilled to be speaking with Iran Kolirin, uh, who is the director of Let It Be Morning. I'm curious, how did you first encounter this book and know that you wanted to adapt it? Um, well, I got a call like seven years ago from Syed Kashua, the author of the book, a Palestinian author, which is very famous in Israel. And uh, I got a call from the producer of the film, say, let's meet together with uh, Syed, you know, he wants to meet you. And then they told me about the project, you know, and to be honest, it sounded at the time like an invitation to a minefield, you know, it was like everything you shouldn't do. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> it was, and, but maybe I was a bit depressed or I felt that, you know, it would be fun to make an impossible thing happen in a way. And I saw it as a uh, welcoming, you know, in, a sign of welcome, you know, and a very interesting project because, you know, Syed wrote his book in Hebrew because he writes in Hebrew, which is a Palestinian author writes in Hebrew. And then I take the film in a way back to the Arab, uh, to the Arab language. And I felt why not uh, tackle these issues? I mean, the story is a story about identities that is taking place in this twilight zone of the identities, I would say. And even the structure of it is like in this interesting twilight zone. And I started working on it and, you know, slowly it became really, I don't know, I think my work, which I'm most proud of in the sense of what happened there, what, what kind of collaboration happened and how this came across the screen and what kind of dialogue that this film also allowed me was quite amazing. And um, I like it very much and I hope everyone else too. <laughs> of course. And the story has been described as a satire. Do you think that's an accurate way of, of talking about it? No, I think it's uh, when people just saw the satire, they were a bit, uh, I think it's a very emotional story. In a way, there's something very personal about it. And what's beautiful about it is that it's, it, stay, it draws this line from this very personal thing to this very political thing, but it never lose the touch to the personal. And in a way it's, you know, I, I thought of this film as like being a ripple of walls. So you have like, you have the hero with this little wall around himself, and then there's a little wall around him and his wife. And then there's, there's a little wall between them and their family, and there's the wall between the family and the village. And then there's, a, there's this wall being built between the Jews and the, uh, uh, the Palestinians of the village. So it's so it kind of went, it's like this ripple of uh, ripples of the question of closure. What is the feeling of closure? What is the feeling of siege? Uh, so I think it has satire, it has humor, but it also has some big sadness in it. And it speaks about love and it speaks about uh, the inability to love, inability to be free. What is freedom? So I don't see it as a satire necessarily. I think that makes sense. Were there any uh, scenes or characters that you had particular trouble trying to adapt for a film? Um, I had, for a long time, I had like, uh, you know, as I see it, when I come into a film, make an adaptation, and really in this case, Syed was very gracious in saying, you know, take the, this movie wherever you want, you know, it's I got big freedom in, in, do, in doing this film, and I thought of it, of it as a kind of a dialogue, not a staging of the book, but I mean, the book is also very great and, you know, I hope people will read it after seeing the book, but I thought that these should be comple complementary in a way, not, you know, one being an adaptation. So I was, I was thinking about, you know, in a way, uh, I had something missing with myself, let's say, uh, and, or maybe, I don't know, I had, Something was still not working for me in the script. And, and then one day I, I went on a, you know, shared taxi ride to, uh, uh, you know, the central bus station here. And, 
you know, those shared taxis, they have this, um, this, you know, this way where people from behind are passing the money to the driver hand by hand. So everyone is passing the money to the driver and the money passes and the driver passes his back. And I was looking at this gesture and I was thinking to myself, how beautiful is that? That people are trusting with their money <laughs> in their front passenger without knowing him and he passes it on, he passes it back. And there's everyone on this, you know, on those kind of shared taxi rides. There would be every kind of class, everybody, but everybody are like, having this little, and then the character of the taxi driver in the film it kind of got to my mind, the world would be something about this atmosphere of solidarity in an endless circle, I would say, but in a, so this was some a character which does not exist in the book kind of clicked in me and was my uh, way of saying some stuff, you know, inside the film. That's great. And how did you select your cast? Was it important to have um, a lot of Palestinian actors playing these roles? Obviously, I needed Palestinian actors to play these roles. I mean, uh, the story is Palestinian. It takes place in a Palestinian village. It was written by a Palestinian of Israeli citizenship, but a Palestinian. So, uh, I mean, so it was obvious that, uh, you know, Palestinian actors uh, would play in it. Uh, I mean, my first step was meeting Juna, who is the casting director on the film, and in a way was also my partner in creating this world of the film, because she came in in a very early stage. And, uh, you know, the first thing she said after, uh, reading the script was uh, was you gotta have you, you gotta have Alex Bakri in your main role and I didn't know Alex I mean I know his cousin Saleh and uh, Muhammad of course but uh, and Ziad and uh, voila, but uh, I, I never heard of Alex so but, uh, but uh, so I said who's he he's living in Berlin he's an editor and she said uh, well, he's my ex-boyfriend and he's just like the character in the film. So I said, okay. And then I met him and Alex reminded me so much of the main character in the film in his way, well, his softness, his smart observation of things and his interior, uh, closed interior, very gentle. And uh, so he came and, you know, I was course, hesitating for a long time, but at the end of the day, I knew she was right. And Alex came abroad and I learned to meet, to know him and, you know, became good friends and, you know, discovered this great actor. And, uh, and the second thing Jonas said also justifiably was at the time, she said, and the woman character is not written well, and she was right also about it. And we were working on it together, and uh, we started trying different actresses for this role, and we didn't find anyone. And then in the last day of audition, she said, she said to me, "You know, I would have been doing it better than all of them." <laughs> and then I said, "Okay, so come on, sit in front of the camera." We had the matching with Alex. And then when she sat next to Alex and all their history came about and suddenly uh, the character of Mira was filled with this anger and vulnerability and uh, passion and power and yet, you know, deep sadness and, and, you know, this combination with the guy who is more observing, more reserved, uh, good hearted, but cannot express it in a way it suddenly came to life. It was obvious that, you know, there's, for me at least, there's truth there, you know. So um, started like that. And slowly, you know, we, the cast was built, places were found, the, the mixed crew was, you know, assembled. We understood that we we're going to shoot it all in the, you know, in the north, in in Palestinian village villages. We're gonna, you know, stay there, and, and it became this real uh, act of, uh, you know, just passion for films and solidarity, which were great. 
It's good to hear. And I know that the resistance of some cast members to this being labeled an Israeli film at the Cannes Film Festival, that to me seems to be very much in the spirit of this film and its content. But I know that it's making a lot of headlines without people necessarily having seen it. Uh, but it does sound like there was a really great spirit of cooperation, which helped to create this film, as you said before. It was amazing. I mean, this moment for me was one of the heights of this film because you know, can we got the answer from can? It was the shittiest time in this country. There was this stupid, redundant, another stupid war that made no sense whatsoever. They were, of course, in trouble, you know, because in a way we were talking together, sitting together. They were like, okay, we are proud of this film. We stand behind it. but. We don't want to be used as whitewashing at this time, you know, to be presented at some sort. What are we going to do? How are we going to approach this matter? And, and you know, uh, we had some conversations that were, you know, for me personally, the most important. If there was something very personal that I, for me in the film was those conversations about how we are still in solidarity. We understand the situation. We understand the powers that one, and we let all of us, you know, do the thing and, you know, hug each other in, in this uh, turmoil or in this uh, situation. And in a way, uh, they felt that the most appropriate for them in order not to still support the film, but not being used or that, that was, was uh, to have a statement to the festival saying we stand proud behind the film we want the film to be there but we have a problem we don't want the bureaucratic fact that okay we are citizens of israel and we paid for uh, the tax money for this film is also from our money so we have every every right to, to make the film but we're not gonna be used under this uh, you know uh, you know headline we have, we're gonna make a statement there and, uh, and, you know, and we talked, they said, you know, we want you to go, of course, and, you know, it was natural. I'm, this thing of not, so in the end of the day, as I see it, the pact is like, I said, whatever you do, I will support it. You know, I, they made a statement, I published it on my, you know, website, my, my, my Facebook page, you know, supporting them. And, and you know, um, on the other hand, they were supporting the film saying, you know, don't think that this is about the film, but this is about, and, and this, you know, collaboration continued also in the, <clears throat> in the latest of fear awards, you know, uh, Juna Suleiman and Alex Bakri received uh, the main prizes and they were happy for, you know, the acknowledgement of their professionality, but still, they wanted, they asked me, so Juna, for example, asked me to read her speech, which was, I think, a very touching speech saying like, I would have wished to be happier, you know, and I'm, I, I, I'm happy, I congratulate the film and the run, but I cannot be separated, I want to make a statement here, and I was reading it, and you know, the next day, I don't want to tell you what right-wing people here in the government was, you know, going down on me and uh, how I will give this... But I don't care because for me, this is more the most important thing is this. And I'm grateful. I cannot say how much for, you know, this uh, real acts of solidarity as human beings for each other in this context of art. And, <coughs> no, and honestly, this is why this film also, I mean, I love the film. I think it's a, it's a film with a story and with humor. You know, any good film should not be, you know, like a political pamphlet in a way. It's not about that, you know, it's about, uh, so I see the, I completely, you know, want people to see the film and have an emotional um, interaction with it. But on a second level, what's happening, happened here for me, and I do believe also for them is, you know, a very blessed journey, which I just would love to be seen, you know. 
Yeah. And because the film won the top Ophir Award, it's now Israel's official Oscar submission for Best International Feature, which I assume if it gets nominated, will continue that sort of sentiment of representing Israel feels like a good thing in some ways and also a, a difficult thing for a lot of the cast. Yeah, but well, yeah, but that's what this film is about. It's about co-resisting co together. This is co-resistance in the sense that we embrace each other, we acknowledge each other as people, as human beings and people. And as far as we are concerned, this is not a nationalistic issue in any way. No one can appropriate this. There is a, a technical category, which is, you know, it's the state of Israel, it's partly financed by the state of Israel, it's partly financed from French. And of course, you know, I am an Israeli, it's part of my identity. I'm Jew, it's part of my identity. There are Palestinian Muslim, it's part of everybody is acknowledging the other. But that's not, that doesn't mean that we need to conform to a certain forced identity upon ourselves in no way. So, of course, if this is the complexity we are tackling here. And this is what the film is about. This is what the act of the film is about in this sense. There is a different way to approach the thing. There's a different way to go about it, you know. Uh, and what I really wish, because sometimes, you know, I was talking and you know how it is in Cannes, they see a lot of films. People do not see the deepness of th this uh, act, you know. So they're like, oh, we heard there were some troubles or anything. No, there were no troubles. There was a, a, a collaborative uh, work and decision and big love which exist. Yeah, and I think that showing this film at the other Israel Film Festival feels like the perfect venue for it. Uh, how familiar were you with this festival and how do you feel about being there uh, this year? Um, uh, I, I'm familiar for years with this festival. I had the band's visit screening there. I had Beyond the Mountains, uh, Mountains and the Hills screening there. Carol uh, uh, Zabar, who uh, is one of the founding members were helping with the, uh, the Broadway show of the band's visit, you know, and so they are part So it's, uh, uh, and I'm very happy uh, to be, you know, along other, I think, interesting, beautiful, non-conformist work of arts there, which, you know, expand the questions about the Middle East and expand the questions about identities and not, uh, you know, staying in a certain, you know, pretend area. And you mentioned the band's visit, which I definitely wanted to ask you about. Did you ever imagine back when you, you made that film that it would have this, this international success and this Broadway uh, sensation after? At the time when I made it, of course, no. I mean, you, made a, you make a small film and uh, you, you're not expecting that, but I think it's a good evidence to when something works in the heart of people in a simple way, it can reach also an audience, you know, and the audience could be bigger than, and, you know, I think for me, it's a sign of optimism because I think the way things going now is that you either have those huge, uh, you know, zillion of dollars things being made that you are kind of forced to see, even if you don't want to really see it, you, you just, you know, see it. And then you have these high end, uh, you know, um, those high end, uh, which I'm not, you know, patronizing in any way, but I'm just saying high end, uh, you know, artistic, very specific works, which are, but in a way for me, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I like to be working also and playing with the popular with the popular uh, sentiment with uh, because films I like uh, my films that I love like you know old Italian cinema old Czech cinema I don't know Aki Karismaki's films they were always also communicative in the sense that they were open to to stories that are in, in one hand simple and touching and on the other hand are complex do Tell, do tell you know le certain levels of things and uh, so and I think Let It Be Morning is also for me in this world I mean, it has this little coat of you asked before about sat satire but it's, it's like coated with this 
little sugar, but when you dive a little bit into the cake, there are many dark tastes going on underneath, and then you get to, I don't know, the deep alcohol well in the bottom of the chocolate cake, which um, made me hungry to think about. <laughs> I like that analogy. Are there other uh, Israeli or Palestinian films that you would recommend to people that have really spoken to you recently? Well, I love I love the latest film uh, by Eli Suleiman. Uh, this must this must be heaven. Um, I, I liked it uh, very much, uh, and uh, I liked it. As, uh, this is a Palestinian film which. Uh, spoke to me, Israeli film that spoke to me. I really liked, uh, I liked Ahed Ni by uh, Dav Lapid's film, which was also a very um, touching work of art. Um, I heard about 200 meters, which screens at the festival. I haven't seen it yet. I'm, I'm waiting, I'm eager to see it. I've um, seen it, it's, it's good. Yeah, it's good. I'm happy to hear it. I also heard good things about Aza Mon Amour, but I didn't get to see it yet. Me neither. Okay. And so what's your next project? Do you know what you're doing after this? Oh, yeah. I have, um, I'm working now on a TV series that takes place at the, uh, the Dead Sea area in Israel, uh, following an insurance investigation after a disappearance of a bus with, with 36 German tourists in the biggest sinkhole that humanity have ever witnessed in the Dead Sea. <laughs> so it's another quirky, strange tale about history and memory and compensation money. Well, it sounds very interesting. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I really appreciate uh, you having this conversation with me today and just uh, very interesting to uh, think about the film after that. Um, anybody who is interested should definitely check out otherisrael.org to find out how to see this film uh, when it shows November 4th. Uh, and best of luck in the future, Aaron. Thanks again for talking to me. Thank you very much, Abe. Take care. Bye-bye.